Good afternoon. My name is Nico House, host of the political radio show Mikasa Sukasa, and I urge you all to join our One Follow One Dollar campaign when we show the me mainstream media that we will not put up with their nonsense anymore. The Patreon link will be below. We are almost to our goal of one thousand dollars a month, and I urge you all to join. Um, so uh, I wanted to see if TYT would actually correct or retract or redact any of the inflammatory. Uh, well, at this point, we'll just call them lies because that's clearly what they are. And anyone, any honest, intelligent, or uh, credible journalist would have easily been able to research these things, even using Google, as bad as Google has been recently. Um, but no, not Chank. You know how Chank is. Chank's going to sit there and read an NPR article. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 NPR said it, so, you know, it must be true. That's what we're and, and and that's what he decided to use for all of his his knowledge of seth rich now for those of you who do not know tyt finally decided to cover the seth rich case but instead of uh presenting all the evidence presenting all the facts and calling it what it is an unsolved unresolved murder with some serious and mysterious circumstances surrounding it, they decided to jump on the corporate bandwagon and call it a conspiracy theory. Um, now, once again, I hate that I hate that phrase because it's an illegitimate phrase that has been turned into um, it's essentially a phrase that tries to illegitimate to illegitimize uh, legitimate concerns. Now, once again, I don't like the phrase because conspiracy is, I mean, like, for example, if you cons conspire to murder, like, you have to theorize, like, if you conspire to murder, you will go to jail if you're caught. Um, and in order for a lawyer to discover that conspiracy, he has to create or she has to create theories surrounding that conspiracy. So, like, conspiracy theory is it's just really not the term to use if you want to call somebody crazy or making up stuff. But, you know, that's that's what they, they use that term to illegitimize legitimate facts. Um, so as most of you all know, uh, there's been a, a lot of groundbreaking things that have come about in the last week. The Rod Wheeler recording, the Seymour Hersh recording. Obviously, as you know, in May, Rod Wheeler had his breaking out month with that huge Fox 5 story. And... TYT has pretty much decided to ignore all of it until this convenient lawsuit kind of came out of nowhere from, from Rod Wheeler. And actually to this day, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what he is, what he was trying to do um, or what he is trying to do with the lawsuit. But I'll get to that in a second. But now, Chank this entire time is reading the NPR article. And I thought at some point he was going to interject with something factual uh, but he did not. In fact, if I'll post the link of the video below, but if you listen to the article, almost 90% of it was lies and misinformation. So I just want to laugh because he starts off the video by saying, we're finally going to report on Seth Rich. That's really weird. You didn't report on the death of an IT staffer who died and could have been a witness in one of the largest political losses of all time. But you finally decided to report on it. And he said, we're and he's his phrasing. We're finally going to report on the sex Seth Rich conspiracy theory, not the open Seth Rich murder investigation, not the not the Seth Rich murder, Seth Rich Rob unsolved robbery the Seth Rich conspiracy theory as if this man's death is somehow a game to him um and he says uh Rod Wheeler is uh suing Fox News for a retracted story and that is true to a degree uh and I will explain a little bit more about that in a second now he rambles and you know he does his thing and it's this is a conspiracy this is that this is this but then he goes on to say, well, it alleges that Ed Batowski, a Republican donor, put him up to it. When actually, if you read the lawsuit, uh, it does not say that Ed Batowski put him up to it. It does not say that he was hired on behalf of the Seth Rich family and um, on, on, on behalf of the Seth Rich family by Ed Batowski. And not only do those facts negate 
that claim that he was hired by Ed Batowski. I'm not saying that he was in, wasn't endorsed by him, and I'll explain why that's probably likely um, that he was endorsed by him at some point uh, to do this story or in to, in to investigate this situation. But there are more facts negating the fact that Ed was the one who put him up to this. Now let's go back and review because Chank doesn't know how to do so. So as you all remember, or maybe some of you don't, but if you all would would remember with me, just travel back with me, there was a GoFundMe started actually by Aaron Rich of the Rich family on behalf of the family to raise funds in order to further investigate the murder of Seth Rich uh, because the DC Police Department was not doing its job. Fast forward a couple of months later, Rod Wheeler was then excuse me was then hired. Now, how do we know Rod Wheeler was hired by the Rich family and not Batowski? Probably because if Chank would have taken 20 minutes to listen to the recording of Rod Wheeler speaking candidly about the entire situation, he would know pretty quickly that Rod Wheeler goes into great detail about how and when they, when he was hired to work for the Seth Rich family. In fact, he even goes into details and describes the misunderstanding that was had between the family and Rod Wheeler as far as him speaking, and even talks about the fact that he was allowed to make the statements, that that uh, statement was the statement that came out from the family was actually not made by the family, but it was made by Bowman, the PR manager that was then uh, that was before assigned to the family on behalf of the DNC. And he even says that Bowman has been trying to spread and in, uh, in, 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 he's essentially been slandering Wheeler and discrediting him, not only around the country, but around the world. So this is from Wheeler's mouth, not mine. And you're and Schenck is getting all his information from an NPR article versus listening to a recorder, a recording that was retweeted a few thousand times on WikiLeaks. The site, the source that has 100% accuracy. So let's 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 go forward. So he says that Batowski put him up to it, which obviously we know isn't true. But then he says that um that everything that Fox News said about the story is a lie. Now this part gets a little bit convoluted and a little weird because even I'm a little confused uh, to what. Ed, uh, Rod Wheeler, excuse me, is trying to do. Now, uh, Zimmerman did write this story saying that Rod Wheeler didn't make uh, particular claims. However, it wasn't actually, believe it or not, Zimmerman in that particular Fox News article that lied. Uh, it wasn't even Sean Hannity who lied. Uh, and if you all remember that day, a lot of us were confused because Rod Wheeler actually never retracted any of his statements. He only corrected a statement that was made, and that statement was made by Fox 5 News in D.C. He never claimed that this article was damaging to him. Now, like I said, uh, I have a couple of people in the legal field who are following this closely, who are saying that this is actually may be an attempt to be, not only get out the truth, but require the truth to be told under oath. So that means all the people that he has talked to thus far in this investigation may have to take the stand. That would be pretty interesting, don't you think? And considering Rod Wheeler has made it very clear that he is not a friend of the DNC, um, that he has talked to his police department, that he has talked to the DNC, and they did try to obstruct uh, that he would probably be all for allowing uh, the everybody who, who is trying to discredit him and defame him to come forward and explain why they're doing so. Um, and that includes Fox News, if that may be the case. Now, why do I say that all these things have been verified? Well, because not only did Rod Wheeler himself say that yeah, he did have a contact in the FBI. Yeah, he actually does have a source that says that Seth Rich was in contact with WikiLeaks. Yes, he actually was told by the D.C. Police Department that he was being obstructed of justice. He didn't say it once, but he said it twice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it up for you. So in the lawsuit itself, he does, for whatever reason, like I said, he does say in Section 115, uh, where it says for, it's on, for those of you who want to look at the link, it's on page 30 of 33, w number 115, Fox Zimmerman Batowski 
issued, approved, endorsed, and or ratified defamatory statements about plaintiffs specifically, and this is in quotes, my investigation up to this point uh, th shows there was some degree of email exchange between Seth Rich and WikiLeaks. This statement was made on May 16th, 2017. Made, endorsed, issued, approved, or ratified. The next statement, uh, my investigation shows someone within the D.C. government, uh, Democratic National Committee or Clinton team is blocking the murder investigation from going forward. Now, he said this is unfortunate. That is unfortunate because Seth Rich murder is unsolved as a result of that. Now, that statement I don't think was ever said. However, the first statement actually was said, and it wasn't only said once, it was said twice, coming out of Rod Wheeler's mouth, mouth and I will post the link below uh, the, YouTube, uh, the YouTube video. It, he says it on Fox 5 News, and actually, the recording that comes out, uh, that came out recently, and now, like I said, I'll post that link below as well, the recording actually reaffirms that he said that, because he says it again, and his beef was never necessarily with Fox News as we come to know it, his beef was with Fox 5, how they ran with the story, how he didn't know that story was going to be ran with, and it was only supposed to be a teaser, all of those details were not supposed to be released because he did not physically see the computer. But in his report, he actually did say that Aaron Rich has a computer and that the uh, and that the FBI has seen the computer. But he did say that there is absolutely proof that WikiLeaks uh, had been in contact with Seth Rich and the FBI confirmed this. He confirmed it in a report. He confirmed it. It on the on on air actually and I'm like I said I'm gonna post the link below uh, and he confirmed it in a recording where he was speaking candidly that ended up being leaked to WikiLeaks. So given all this information, Cheng decided, well, I'm going to keep pushing the idea this is a conspiracy theory. Damn the fact that Seymour Hirsch came out and said that yes, Seth Rich has in fact been in contact with WikiLeaks and was at least one of the sources and he explained how he did it. His FBI source in it. And trust me, if you want to compare Chank's credibility versus Seymour Hersh's credibility, the same C the same Seymour Hersh that is a Pulitzer Prize winner, the same Seymour Hersh that has uncovered the Obama administration's involvement with transferring uh, chemical weapons from Libya to Syria and then getting caught. If you want to compare Chank to Seymour Hersh, then that is a personal issue on your behalf. But the rest of us normal people in the normal world are probably going to take Seymour Hersh's word when he says that he has a high-ranking FBI official, given that he's already been using him to a very uh, successful degree thus far, which is probably why he has a Pulitzer Prize. Anyway, Seymour Hersh says that Seth Rich was using a Dropbox to communicate with WikiLeaks and even said that Seth Rich left a message on one of his drop Dropboxes um, that said, I've also shared this to a few of my friends. So getting rid of me uh, won't solve your problem. So this is those are Seth, Rich, Seth Rich's words, clear as someone who knew that he was in danger. And I will post a link to that recording of Seymour Hersh below. Overall, not only did Shank completely try to twist this story in every way fathomable, but he was lazy, he was journalistically dishonest, he was intellectually dishonest, and he could have easily found these facts out if he would have did any iota of research. And he does it, he does it on purpose. He, he likes the corporate narrative. He wants to push a corporate brand. He wants to be MSNBC of the internet. He tries, notice, he has not been criticizing the establishment media that much. In fact, he's been, he's been uh, uh, pushing the Russia narrative with absolutely no proof, yet calling this a conspiracy theory. His proof is the same proof that that New York Times provided saying that there were 17 uh, intelligence agencies when that has been thoroughly debunked by, C once again, Seymour Hersh himself. And then that is, Sir Seymour Hersh said that actually they were brought into a back room and then giving a back a back room brief saying that these uh, agencies were were uh, were accurate in their, in their um, 
identifying Russia as being the hackers. It turned out that that was a lie. It was part of a disinformation campaign started by the CIA on behalf of Brennan. Brennan was in charge of it. And he said he further went and described why, why the New York Times fell for it, saying that they always fall for the appeal of authority. And he knows this personally, Seymour Hirsch, because he worked for the New York Times. So Seymour Hirsch has thoroughly debunked the idea that, new, that the 17 intelligence agencies all agreed that are, they have strong confidence that Russia hacked the elections. And you know how you know his idea was or that his assertion that that is debunked is true because New York Trump, New York Times retracted the article proving Seymour Hersh's point. And yet he is still peddling the nonsense that Trump put him up to this to uh, to to take attention off of the Russia story. I'm not going to lie. That's probably at least true to a degree. Why? Because if somebody was clearly making lies about me in order to discredit me so that I can't do my job, so that I will not be reelected, my inclination would probably be to follow that story closely, to follow a story that can prove my innocence closely. So I don't think that Trump is actually wrong in that sense. If, if you're saying he's guilty because he wanted to take attention off of a, a illegitimate story that has been proven to be illegitimate, that has been proven to be nothing but conspiracy theory, then he's probably guilty of that. But I would be guilty of that too. And if any of you say you wouldn't be guilty of it, you're being dishonest with yourself. So, Chank, you are disgusting. You are a dis You are not a journalist. You are the... Your mainstream media with less credibility less charisma, and less money backing you. But you still have a lot of money backing you. And it's very clear what your goal is. Your goal isn't to report real news. You, you don't even sound like you're, when you're prog like reporting progressive news, you don't even sound like you actually believe in the things that you're reporting. And overall, it's just very clear and very obvious that you have no interest in reporting the truth. Now, there are few people on TYT that I like and some that do a pretty decent job. Uh, Michael Tracy. I love Michael Tracy. Jimmy Dore does a, a, a good job for the most part. There are a couple of others. But like I said, just like MSNBC has a couple of good journalists, just like I'm sure CNN has a few good journalists, that doesn't mean that TYT's goal hasn't been made clear because it's still Anna and Shank reporting the same main sh news on the main show, the same conspiracy theories on the main show of Russia with absolutely no evidence, quoting CNN, quoting Washington Post, quoting the New York Times, using them as a... Th it's Okay, so independent journalists, every now and then when it comes to facts, when it comes to fact-based logic, we have to explain where we get the facts from. So every now and then, we will actually use one of those sources on, from the mainstream media to talk about a particular fact a like quantifiable, qualifiable fact. Now, what we will not do, however, is use any of those sources for a logic-based dishonest argument. That is the clear difference, ladies and gentlemen. And Chank did that. He did that after he spent an entire primary season trying to criticize the mainstream media, saying that he was so much different than they were. But he's clearly not. And if you still believe that he is, because I, I don't get that, that upset. But this story is considering that I've had people close to me involved in a lawsuit threatened. Considering the fact that in the DNC fraud lawsuit, we had somebody who died after uh, serving the subpoena to, for the DNC to appear in court. You know, he died a couple of days before a motion was filed to, 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 for improper service. Uh, and we still have not been able to get his autopsy. So, like, when things like that happen, and then I have Chank trying to make light of the fact that uh, people, yeah, I can't believe that they're alleging that anybody is involved in the, in the murder of Seth Rich. I can't believe that they would think that there may be a political agenda in committing political suicides, because that's never, ever happened in history. No, we don't have 100% proof that anybody in the DNC was involved, and no one is saying that we have 100% proof. What we are saying is we do have proof of obstruction. We do have proof of disinformation and misinformation. We do have proof that Russia did not co actually hack the election. Not saying that they didn't try to influence it because they're a superpower and that's what superpowers do. But I, we did not say we we do have proof of that that that's fact. We do have proof that that 
they're peddling conspiracy theories that the mainstream media is peddling conspiracy theories we do have proof that they've retracted their own statements we do have proof of all of these things that add up to make us wonder okay there is only one party that can mutually benefit off of the russian narrative being pushed at the same time that the seth rich investigation is being called a conspiracy theory at the same time that defamatory statements deflam defamatory statements made on behalf of the seth rich family by bowman because he's the one writing it that's what pr got guys do if you don't know he's the one writing these statements so all these things only benefit one group one party down to one person and that is hillary clinton and all the people who are surrounding her so no we do not know for a fact and we can we can all we can all agree on we don't know for 100 percent fact but damn bruh you can't use your logic it's really that easy that video was disgusting i don't understand how anyone could watch you you read you read straight from an npr article took the word as gospel have not done any research on the situation at all it was very clear you were stumbling over the facts and then you had the nerve while you were reading to say uh after a reading report from fox news or fox 5 news like the fox 5 news wasn't an extremely important portion of this entire narrative when in fact it is probably one of the most important parts of the entire narrative because you would know that they were the one who kind of misrepresented some of the things that rod wheeler had said it wasn't initially fox news fox Fox News did not break the story. Fox 5 News broke the story. Anyway, sorry, I got a little hype right there. But <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. Please share your thoughts and your comments and everything below. Uh, I would definitely love to hear your opinion about this. I'm going to leave all the links below. Hit that notification button for updates. And always remember, find your balance. Peace.